So we had a really good storm last night. It rained quite some time. The ground is saturated. It's going to be a warm day today, so we are going to have a growing garden. Here we are. This is the garden behind the garage. And uh, you can see the peas and the corn here are side by side and they're growing like crazy. It's only in the middle of June and that corn is almost knee high already. The old saying is knee high by the 4th of July. And it's June 16th. I think it's a combination of uh, two things here. We got the peas, I believe, are making nitrogen and food for the corn already. I'm not quite certain of that if the corn will actually take the nitrogen from live peas, but um, I believe that to be the case. And also last year I had dried beans grown there. I think that's why that corn is growing really well. And I didn't till the soil. I just left the roots. And I actually uh, did dig a little trench there and put some, put all the, the bean plants in the ground right there. And that's probably why that corn is doing so well. You can see the corn next to it I planted at the same time. It's not as high because the beans weren't there and there's no peas next door. There's still some radishes left in there. Today probably a good day to grab them out of there. It'll be juicy from the rain. Here's a kiwi. See, it's doing well. One of them died, or at least I think it died. I did uh, scratch it a little bit the other day, and it seemed like it was green under the bark. So I don't know. The male here is just growing like crazy. Female. And then there's another male, and the person I got it from said this male is the better of the two. I'm gonna let both males grow. And another female. So then here we have uh, country gentleman's corn growing, and we got some speckled cranberry beans in front of them, and then we have uh, scarlet runner beans planted in amongst it. Then we have another row of Hooker's Indian Sweet Corn, but this is from a different company here. It's been planted a couple weeks later than the first stuff. More speckled cranberry beans. That barrel was empty this yesterday and it's half full today. So that's how much rain we got. Look at this glorious comfrey plant here. Look at that. A couple more. You see the bumblebees working it. These were the first peas I planted. You can see they're up here three feet already. They're supposed to go six feet. These are the honey berries. Part of the honeysuckle family. This is a lemony quince. Still growing even after all that cold weather. That is a black mulberry. This is a white mulberry. that has a purple tint to it. A lavender look. It's called a lavender. I just got it. It's just starting to 
but uh, I'm going to be make, constructing a espalier along this fence. Mulberries are very easy to manipulate. They'll live through anything. So they're going to have their branches growing long, parallel to the earth, along the fence. Here we have our asparagus. And the tomatoes in our little grocery bag greenhouses are just exploding out of their bags. They really like that comfort. So I'm just going to leave the bags there until they grow up above the, the top ring of the tomato cage. Peppers are a little slow, it's been cold. Basil's okay. Parsley, geraniums. Parsley's doing really well. See, that's growing fast. New additions to the family here. The center fence, see I had uh, the original garden was uh, the one closer to the garage. Now I built this uh, second fence around uh, around the back here and I didn't take the middle one out. Why should I? Might as well just leave it in. You never know some rodent or creature gets into one and can't get into the other. So you'll save half of your garden, right? But here's the new additions are grapevines. These are seedless grapes. I got four of them planted in there. Two of them are pink and two of them are red. Right here is a cornelian cherry. It's not a real cherry, but it makes a cherry type fruit. It's tart. It's supposed to be really good in pies. We're gonna try it. I got it from Oikos Tree Nursery in uh, Michigan. It's supposed to grow 20 feet high and it, it can stand the shade, so I put it back here. Just on the other side of the fence here, I have, uh, or the wall, I have my compost area. And I'm gonna let this cherry grow up and make sure that it shades the composting area. I don't want my composter to dry out. And this here is a new addition. It's called a May Day tree. It also can grow 20, 20 to 25 feet high. It has blossoms that look just like lilacs. Except for we get a positive beyond lilacs beyond just looking at them, and that is Some sweet berries that you can eat I want them also I also read that The blossoms smell really very well very good This is my little chive patch I let the milkweed grow for the monarch butterflies This big old beast I'm letting grow too. I let him grow last year. Every time I brush past it with my legs, I get a little, little reminder that uh, it's got stingers. That's okay. I won't let it flower though. I won't have any seeds to spread around. It's my compost maker. I had these berries last year, and then I got films of it. You can see there, I got berries already. It's called a sunrise. This is an heirloom. You can actually plant these berries and it'll grow more plants. Mmm. They have a sweetness to them. Almost like a little sweet tomato. Mmm. Oh, let's move along. Here's the tomatoes on the outside here. Look at that one growing like a weed. That one is a Cherokee green.
peppers. These are bush squash. Acorn squash mostly, but there's a Japanese in there, some Japanese bush squash. Finally getting going. Warm temperatures today will get them pushing up. Greenhouse has been taken down. At least the walls have. Next start of poles. You can only do so much in a day. Here's the three sisters that we have a video on from a month ago when I planted it. Doing pretty well. One of them has an ant hive coming in. I'm going to get some diatomaceous earth. Keep saying that I'm going to do it, but I never do it. So some of the corn didn't come up because the plant it right in their, in their home. Kohlrabi, beets, and onions growing with that clover patch. And I got tomatoes plant or uh, watermelons planted all between the corn and in the background here. And another new addition are Chicago figs. They actually were at the big box store and uh, the cold weather killed them. Or at least their leaves fell off. But I could tell there was little buds coming, so I bought them, $3 a piece. And what they're supposed to do is die back every winter and then they bring on new uh, leaf material and and grow about 10 figs per plant up here in zone 5. So we're going to find out. We have oregano, wild celery, there's some earth peas behind that, and there's some grape vines. See this the edges of them? I'm going to allow them to grow up the shed. See I got some trellis I put in there for them, that fence. There's one on each side. There it is, there it is. There's a there's some folk art that I bought at the thrift shop. It's got a little bell on it, see that? There's a pelican. I don't know if I've done one on my on our fruit trees here for a while. I planted some apple trees that uh, the tags got somehow got buried underground, so I won't know until I kind of dig up the land around it. So this is a nice apple tree; it's growing very well. This will be its third summer. Right there's a crab apple tree. Got that on clearance for like three bucks last fall, and it's doing quite well. Robinson, I think it was called. Look at that. And most people would have looked at the the sapling here and they would have declared it dead. But I could tell it had a little green under the bark. I thought, well, let's go give her a try. Three bucks can't. You're only gonna lose three bucks. And then this is our Reliant peach tree replacement for our older one. I guess they don't live really that many years. Three decades or something. And this is its uh, third summer here. And look at the growth already this year, look at that. Four more years it'll start making peaches. These are old cherry trees from the original cherry tree and we don't get very many cherries off of them ever. It's a sour cherry. I don't know if they need a pollinator or what but I'm gonna, I got plans to put in some more cherry trees and so we'll see. Here's our peach tree. This is the old bird. 
And we're gonna have lots of peaches this year. Right out. They're really gonna come. We are going to be sweetened. Here's an experiment I'm doing. I had some fencing material packed up here and it killed this, the grass. So I mounted up just this big, huge mound of it. It's actually a wheelbarrow full of aged sheep manure. And uh, actually I dug a pit first and took the soil out, put the sheep manure in the, in the pit, maybe, you know, a foot, foot deep pit. And then I mixed the soil and the sheep manure together as I mounted it back up. Of course, it all got fluffed up and popped out of the ground pretty good. And then I planted it with squash and pumpkins. And I got I have some uh, buckwheat growing around it and some radishes and some clover. I planted all that all around this area. We're going to see what happens. This top squash is actually a survivor from the frost killing event I had in my greenhouse. I believe it's the only one that survived. I'm not even sure what it is. I think it's a banana squash. This is my Arkansas black. New planting from the spring. I really like it, so it's probably going to die. <laughs> no, that goes. This uh, rhubarb here that I bought isn't going to make it. I'm going to have to put another one in there, I think. I don't know. There might be some knob here. Uh, we'll see. And I've got uh, mint growing. I'm going to establish a big bed of mint next to all my apple trees. It's a confuser plant. It confuses the apple fly, apple maggot fly, as well as the chives. So I'm going to be working on that to all my trees. Here's another pile of, of pumpkin and squash plants. This one has. Um, Luxury, winter luxury pumpkins. It's a really good eating pumpkin. Sweet, eat it like a squash. Here's my silver chestnut tree. The buds still haven't come out yet. It's been in for at least two weeks. So we're waiting for it to wake up. This is a peach tree. It's the same type of peach tree as the first one that I planted three years ago. I also planted this one three years ago. This is its third th summer. And man, it's got problems. But we're gonna let it hang on, see what happens. I might transplant that uh, to another property. Maybe I'll give it away. This is a red Gravenstein. I don't think I've got a pollinator for it, so I'm going to be planting another tree as a pollinator. I'll wait till the fall. You can see it's a grafted tree and it's coming out of the, the root. They got a lot of fencing here now, so I'll let it grow until I prepare it for the winter. And I'll clip it off. I think if you let one. If you let one grow, it'll grow along with the apple tree, but because it's the rootstock wants itself to grow, it won't give the nutrients to the uh, to the graft that it would otherwise. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna experiment with this one. I'm gonna clip those off. Now this is another experiment where the other mounds have uh, dead grass around it. This one is live. I just dumped it right on top of the lawn. And it's all sheep manure. There's just a little bit of dirt right on the top for the seed to sprout in. So we're going to see what happens. We got two of them. This is an Italian hazelnut. I planted it here and then I figured out that it, it likes shade. So it's going to be growing in the sun here. We're going to let it grow. I'll buy another one and put it in the shade in the fall. Fall is a good time to plant trees after they drop their leaves. See, we got chives, we have rhubarb, and we have a tree. I think it's uh, golden grinds.
This is its third summer. Just taking hold now. New addition to the family here. This is a contender peach. I just planted it two, three weeks ago. And I've got I'm helping it a little bit. I've got it attached to this pole. Um, I'm gonna take that off probably in another probably two weeks. You don't want to stake up trees because um, the wind helps them grow. If you don't allow the wind to work it, it won't grow. The, the stump, uh, the trunk won't. So I got three apple trees here. I think one's red Macintosh, yellow Macintosh. I think that's a sweet 16, but I forget. I planted it 2000. This is a northern spy. It's an early tree. I see the deer came along and already pruned it for me. This is a contorted filbert. Look at that. So this filbert is going to overlook our other project that's going on here. Which I don't want to talk about too much until it's done. This is a Honeycrisp Apple. Those rhubarbs are going to shade the ground and keep it moist for the trees. And that's the idea behind that. Here's another Golden Grimes. Got gooseberries. Blueberries, these blueberries were just one little bitty, teeny little sprout coming. And uh, boy, they're really growing. I don't want to talk about this hill much. I don't know what it's done. This is my first hugu culture here, and I'm letting everything grow on it. It's all going to add material, composting material to the, to the culture. See, I got some rhubarb here. Look at the leaves. Look at the leaf on that rhubarb. Just look at that. Ooh, see that rabbit? Look at that. Just growing like crazy. And then the one that's away from the hugo culture isn't as big. So there's something to that hugo culture method. Right there, that's the proof of it. So I also have a line of bush hazelnuts back here. ones growing in the tubes are growing very well, really leafed out. And the ones that I just have cages, I'm just a little behind. It's been cold. But I've got 10 of them, and there's seven of them back here. You just saw two, here's three, four, five, six. Oh, there's six back here, and then I've got one isolated from all the rest of them. That's a bush hazelnut. We'll walk our, our jungle path. I'm a registered Wildlife Federation yard that's fa that favors wildlife. So I got brush piles back here and I let the weeds grow tall. This is the, the garlic that I planted here a long time ago. And it went wild. That's okay. This is a skunkum chestnut tree that I planted. I got two of them on the property now. This is a, an American persimmons. They can compete in the shade. They're gonna grow 60 feet tall. Here is a pawpaw in the shade here. 
and that's just starting to sprawl. You barely see it. Same thing with that one, another pawpaw. I got a Saskatoon right inside the fence. That's a Saskatoon. Berries. Pawpaw's fruit. This here was an American persimmons that dropped its leaf right after I planted it, but now there's a little teeny little bud coming up on it. So it's coming back. Right, right, right there, see it? Right there, right there. Hard to see it. And these are, uh, this is a bush that I planted about 20 years ago. Let's see if we can see, look at that, look at, ooh, currants. Doesn't that look nice? There's some more that I transplanted back over here. Got too shady where they were. So there's one that I transplanted, and then there's another one here. Transplanted a lot. What happened to it? Uh oh. It's right here. Oh, here it is. Here it is, right here. It's growing in amongst all these weeds. And this one I put in, I bought that last fall. That's a black currant. I have other black currants inside the fence here. Right there. There's seven black currants that I planted. Three different strains for pollination purposes. There's another pawpaw there. And here's an American persimmons that wants to grow. Look at that. Leafing all over the place. And I got an experiment growing back here. This is a bed of I think it's mostly Canadian goldenrod. Might be some yarrow in there. But before it came up this spring, I planted uh, seven or eight rows of Jerusalem artichokes in it. That's what this is. These Jerusalem artichokes are going to grow 12 feet tall. And the experiment is. Will they shade out the Canadian goldenrod and take over? That would be nice. Jerusalem artichokes have a lot of good qualities. And eventually, these uh, American persimmons trees are going to grow up and they're going to eat the Jerusalem artichokes. So that'll be food for the trees. The idea, here's one a deer ate. Deer came along and ate the top out of it. In there. That's an artichoke. I planted them in here like every six inches. And although I don't see them see that many coming up, there still might be some in amongst the canopy of goldenrod. We'll see. It's an experiment. Once in a while I come back here and I would pull them and I would put them in a compost pile. These pull really easy here. See that? It's coming out. When I feel real ambitious. There's another pawpaw that I don't think is going to make it. I planted like 17 of them. This is an aronia bush. Really doing well. I'll be planting more of those. Another pawpaw. It's just starting to leaf out. Let's see that. I even show it to you. That looks nice. See that right there? Just starting to come out. Pawpaw can also live in the shade. It's an understory tree. Another American persimmons. I planted five of them. And at the end of its life, it, it uh, rewards us with a very rich, hard 
strong wood. This is a uh, Allegheny service berry. I have two other service berries inside the fence here. Right there. Right there. There's a blue bean tree right inside the, right on the other side of that post. Blue bean tree. They grow eight feet tall. And they actually make a bean that you can eat. Supposed to have a, a sweet astringent flavor. I had a tree that had fallen down here and I cut it up a month ago. I'm going to bury all those log segments. It's a box elder. And right now the brush, the birds are having a great time with the brush pile. You see them darting in and out of there. They must be eating insects that are hiding in there. I can imagine there's a few rabbits in it too. Then I am trying to establish a grove of pawpaw trees. Let's see, that one, there's one that's, oh that one's doing good. There's one that didn't sprout. Any buds yet. Ooh, look at that one. Anyways, there's seven of them back here, and I actually didn't cover two of them just to see if anything would eat it. Because you never know, some, some of these things are not palatable to the mammals around here, the deer and the rabbits, but they both got eight. I'll show you one of them right here. Yeah, right here, I got eight right down on its core. It's still green, see that? See, it's a little green in there. So we should probably cover it. I planted some forage grass in amongst that too. But uh, the pawpaw trees, hopefully they get up and start to eat all that stuff. This is a Juneberry Blue Perfusion. Advertised as being really sweet. That's the garlic patch. You can count my steps. That's a lot of steps. This is a, a lone bush hazelnut tree right here in the corner. They go to grow 12 feet high. So it'll be a nice uh, nice look to it in the corner there once it's up there over the top. This is my potato onion patch. My grandma's onions. The rabbits actually ate those this winter. It was a long winter with deep snow. They didn't have much to eat. Okay, here's my set onion patch. Got some monster grass clippings. Really doing well. We've got some peas here, and the peas are to feed the blackberries and the grapevines that I got planted along the fence. We're going to have some grapes. Blackberries. This is a little patch that I uh, planted buckwheat and in about 45 days after I planted it I'm going to hoe it back into the soil. Add a lot of organic matter to the soil and uh, trace minerals. 
This is the oldest grapevine on the property. It's like 25 years old. I planted it in 1985, so longer than that. Almost 30 years old. This is my three sisters that I did uh, early. This is a Kellius corn, Roy Kell Roy's Kellius corn. It's the only corn that survived to give a crop in the year 1816, the year when there was no summer here in the United States. So I have, you can see the climbing beans are coming up. And this one has five corn stalks, five corn seeds growing. Um, I actually kind of mixed this up. I got three and some, four and some, and five and some per hill. And we're going to see if there's any difference. You know, you'd expect to have the, the corn with only three seeds in it to give you bigger ears with more corn on a cob. That's the experiment to find out. Every one of these uh, mounds, and there's 16 of them, so each one of these mounds have a big fish planted under them. And is that one big fish enough to feed the five corn stalks as much as the three? Because also the beans are going to be helping to feed the corn as well. And then in between all the corn, I got squash growing. That's really growing good there. I think those are banana squash. Another grapevine. And I actually did another thing too is I planted the tips of the ends here into the soil. And this one really looks good here, you can see. And I want it to root. See that? Yeah, I planted it into the ground right there. So I'm gonna this this fall I'm gonna clip it off right here. Just gonna clip it. And hopefully it'll start another break plant. This is a mound of Jerusalem artichokes. At some point here I'm going to be cutting three quarters of this down and adding it to the compost pile. If I had animals I'd feed it to animals. Squash back here. That's the blue bean plant right there. Service berries, currants, this is a wild patch that, uh, well there's yellow raspberries in there and I haven't taken care of it very well yet. I'm debating whether I'm going to yank the whole thing out because the, these berries are kind of crumbly in your hand and they taste good but Well, I might transplant them in along the fence or something. I haven't decided yet. Maybe I'll just clean it up. See what happens. Anybody home in there? Yeah, look at there in there. We got us a big anthill here. I'm letting them live because they uh, cart off the dead bees. So they take care of that problem. They're getting pretty big, so I don't know. I planted soybeans and beans in this spot, and they're not coming up very well. These are the soybeans right here. 
maybe after this rain they're gonna sprout I'll give them another two or three days and then I'm gonna replant the bare spots so there's three rows of soybeans in here and then I planted some specialty beans that had some unfamiliar names and they're pretty they were pretty beans that's why I liked them now here I planted there was ten seeds to a pack and right now four have come up oh, look at there's one coming up here looks like yep so that'll be five out of ten well, maybe some more come up yet and this one here had 15 seeds and there's one two four of them up and then I see two sprouting so we're looking six out of 15 so far have come up but I didn't inoculate them that they probably you know they need to have that help And then we got two rows of cow peas that I planted densely together, and oh, they're doing well. Look at that. Cow peas. Then I've got three rows of turnips, and in between them I have carrots. So I got two of them thinned out here, and one I haven't thinned out yet. But the idea is, is you're harvesting the turnips in 60 days or so, loosening the soil for the carrots. lima beans planted 10 of those and right now one two three four five six seven of them will come up here's a specialty black bean and um, one two three four five six seven of them came up I think I planted 15 in there then the last one I really remember what it is I gotta think <laughs> Well, we'll know when it starts to make beans. And here's our tomato, our uh, watermelons. We have 10 watermelon plants in this little patch. See, these are moon and stars. See the little yellow spots on them? That's doing good. I'm going to be do splitting some hives or working the hives today. I'll get some video on that too. And this is my little clover patch. I planted a grape back here. This is my black raspberry patch. Doesn't that look nice? Look at that. Looks like I'm going to have some berries. They're starting. Just starting to blossom. Look at that Black raspberries. And I got elderberry plants growing. Not supposed to eat those raw, you gotta cook them. And some Shisandra vines or magnolia vines. They are supposed to be one of the healthiest berries that you can eat. You wouldn't believe all the health claims behind that. Look at the Chinese magnolia vine. They actually come out of Russia, I think. They, they can grow as much as 100 feet long, so you got to trim them. But I'm going to let them grow up this fence, and I'm going to put a fence over the top, just a wire fence, wire welded fence over the top from this one to the wooden one. And I'm going to let them grow over the top of that fence and down the other side. And you're just going to walk under it and you can eat the berries without even picking them. There's another one. They're doing pretty good. It takes three to five years before they fruit. So hopefully they uh, fruit before they die. <laughs> And once I start eating them, then I'll live forever. How about that, huh? That's five of them. And I got more elderberries in here. This one's not doing so good here. Something happened to it here. It's sprouting new ones, so I don't know. Let's see what happens. So 
Oh, I think that's it. Oh, I'll show you one more thing. This is my back to Eden garden. Just wood chips over the top of the soil. And I've got uh, potatoes planted in here. So they're getting pretty high now. I'm going to hill them up and then uh, cover the soil right up to the base of the potato plant. So that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. Have a nice sunny day.